have a good time. Put a smile on your face, yeah. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. Mm-hmm. Even brighten your day and help you through the night. Bring you good music. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. And here's your host.
to pray. We want to pray so that God can get the glory. Hallelujah. We welcome you to the Just For You podcast with Pastor Michelle Y. Wright. God is good. We want to thank you, and we praise God for another day of him being with each and every one of us. I don't know if you heard the song. The song said he's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. Today, yesterday, and forevermore. There was a little gap. We want to let you know we're here and God is good. I want to greet our CEO and founder, Dr. Kimmy Robinson, and our Elation family. I want to say hi to you, each and every listener listening in. Whether it's your first week or you journey with us every week, we appreciate you and we don't want to take it for granted. We thank God for my husband, Pastor Donald Wright Jr., who is listening in and supporting as well. And this is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We know he's worthy to be praised. I want to tell you, if this is your first time listening in, what the Just For You podcast is all about. The Just For You podcast is designed to encourage, empower, and engage listeners to thrive spiritually and naturally utilizing biblical principles. Just For You will reveal truth embedded in the Holy Bible to illustrate kingdom living, soul winning, compassion, and strategies to serve mankind, making a difference locally and globally. Just For You will allow listeners to hear teachings that are applicable, guests that will inspire, and opportunities for serving more effectively in the home, church, school, and marketplace. Listen, God desires for each and every one of us to use our gifts to glorify Him. On today, we're talking about Dress to win. Again, that's dress to win. And we're going to pray, asking God to come in to rule and to have his divine will in a way that he be glorified and lifted up. And we believe he was do just that. Do you not know? He's a great God. He's a majestic God. He's a God that cares about everything concerning you. We are thankful on today that he will not fail us. He ever listens. He ever is concerned about what concerns us. Let us go before the throne of grace and pray that his perfect will be done with this podcast. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength. We thank you for every trial and tribulation. We thank you that we are submitting to a God that hears and answers prayers. Would you lead us, guide us, direct us, give us strength, give us hope, give us peace, and those things that we are seeking your face for. We just want you to know we love you with a love that can't be explained. We love you. We adore you. We appreciate you. And we're thankful for you being in our lives. Father, for that one that does not know you, would you send a Christian laborer across their path that they may get to know you and this peace and joy and love that we had, that they may understand that you do care. You listen and you hear all that is needed concerning your children. I ask, oh God, that whatever is on the hearts of the listeners, that this word today will encourage, it will strengthen, it will exhort them, and that they will have a peace that they've never had, that they will walk in some things they've never walked in before because of your word. 
God, lead us, guide us, and direct us. Forgive us all of our sins as we forgive others, O oh God. We just need you to do what you do best, and that is abide with us, and we are going to abide with you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, listen, I thank you again for listening in. On today, as we said, we're going to be talking about dress to win. Dress to win. And what does that mean? Well, I don't know about you, but every day, preferably so, when we go out of our homes and whether we're going to school or whether we're going to work or whether we're going to a special occasion, we want to dress appropriately. But as a Christian, what is the proper attire? We know there is day wear, there's evening wear, there's cocktail wear. There's so many different things, business attire, casual wear. What are you wearing on today? Well, spiritually so, there is also attire. And we're going to talk about the attire that a Christian wears, that a believer wears, someone that is following God because they desire his will to be done. And listen, let me say this going in. We are a work in process. And we don't want you to under, we don't want you to misunderstand that if you are not at a certain level that you can't dress for the kingdom. Everyone born was born with a purpose in mind. And this lesson will help you to remain strong in your weakest hour. It will help you to go farther in your walk with the Lord. It will strengthen you to understand you are dressed to win. So if you will, get your Bibles out. We're going to be reading from the book of Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6, we will be reading from the King James Version. The King James Version. So please, follow along. We always say, don't just take my word for it. Get your Bibles, get your phones, get your tablets, get your computers, whatever you use. But most of all, if you have the Word of God, the Bible itself, what an honor and a blessing it is to be able to read through it. So beginning at the first verse, it says, Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Let's stop right there. Did it give you a classification of parents because I didn't see one? Did it tell you whether the parents are a Fortune 500 or if you have a uh, uh, two-room house, that you were to honor those that had money, didn't have money, uh, perhaps were older, their parents of all ages. Did it give you a description there? It did not. It said, honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. I hear you. Well, maybe they didn't raise me. Maybe they weren't a good parent. Maybe this, maybe that. But this is what the word of God says. And that means your caretaker and whoever else raised you, honor and pray and seek the face of God, that he may give you what it is he's seeking of you in regards to that. Three, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Did you hear that? Fathers have a responsibility that are believers to bring their children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. They have an awesome responsibility to also not provoke them. 
Don't cause them to become angry. Don't cause them to become ungodly. Don't cause them to act unbecoming. Their job as a leader is to make sure that the words that they speak out of their mouth match what the word of God says, that the children may grow up healthy and strong and be able to fulfill this word, which teaches them to honor their father and their mother. Five, servants, be obedient to them that are your masters, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of your heart as unto Christ, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Well, ain't nobody looking, so I'm on the job. I'm going to take this extra 10 minutes. Uh, You know what? I don't have to listen to the teacher because, actually, they can't see me on virtual anyway. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to eat my breakfast, my lunch, and I'm going to chill. And then when they say, turn the camera on, I'm going to do something different because I don't have to listen to them because I'm not in the classroom. How about I don't have to listen? At the church, I don't, because you know what? That's not something that I want to do. I'd rather do this, and you know what? God know my heart, and I'm just going to do what feels good to me. Now, let me stop you right there. When leadership is in your life, it is for a reason. God has set it in order for a reason. It is our duty. He says, not. To do with eye service. Don't want to be seen doing what you're doing. But nobody sees you. God always sees you. He said to be with fear and trembling. And for you as in the singleness of your heart. Why is that important? Because you want God to get the glory. You want him to get the glory. You want him to be glorified with goodwill doing service as to the Lord and not to me. Do you think you would do differently if you knew the Lord was sitting right there or in your presence? Well, can I let you know he always is and that he's doing just what he said he'll do? Knowing that whatever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. So that means he's paying attention to your character. He's paying attention to your life. He's paying attention to what you're doing. He said you're going to receive the same as if you were bond or free. That's important. And ye masters, do the same things unto them, forbearing threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is there respect of persons with him. We talked about this before. Do you remember when COVID hit? Some of the Fortune 500 bosses, I'm sure, never imagined not going to the office not running their teams, not being able to do what they do, because for them, it is their life. For some people, leadership on that level is highly regarded, and it is what they desire to do. And listen, to not be able to do what you really are called to do can be frustrating. It can be heartbreaking. But God shut the world down for a reason. He shut them down for a reason to understand he is God. Whether it's on your job, whether it's in the church, whether it's in the community, all of us got the opportunity to see what it was like to live on the same level. Whether you had a mansion or whether you lived in a different environment, you were able to see Quarantine was for everybody. You were able to see going in and out the house as usual was a wrap. You were able to see 
things were not the same. And there was no particular respecter of persons that could break it. Now, here's where we go back to obedience. Do you think a lot of people continue to do as they did before? I want to say yes, they did. But in doing that, did they please God? Were they able to do what was right of God? Were they able to understand that because he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, that they were not able to do as they had done before? And when they did wrong, when they did wrong, we found how quickly COVID spread. It's important to understand the word of God, that it affects everybody around you. There were churches, I'm sure, that still stayed open. There were people that did as they wanted. But remember, the Lord is watching. He's concerned about his people. So we get to this point where he says to us, I want you to live a certain way. If you belong to me, you will dress like me. You will prepare your mind and your heart and your spirit to do what is right. Is that an easy thing to do? I'm the first to tell you, no, it is not. Because the Bible says there's no good thing in the flesh. So when you want to do good, this is what Paul says, evil is always present. So you have to condition your mind, okay, there's a quarantine, okay, this is this way, or okay, that is that way, in order to fulfill God. Why is that important? Because he's looking in the end game for the kingdom to be built. He's looking for a people who will keep their mind focused, keep their heart in a place where he can speak to you and you hear him. And that things will happen when you dress to win. Why are we dressing to win? Because we have a real-life adversary. We have a force that works against the good that God does. And it is up to us as believers to walk accordingly, to walk in his love, walk in his grace, follow closely to him because he is our leader. He's our Abba Father. He's our God. Our elder brother is Jesus, who protects and keeps us, who prays for us in the midst. When we're falling apart, the Bible clearly lets us know he's interceding on our behalf. He cares about what's on our mind. He cares about what we face. He cares. So here in the world, it says in the temple, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on, here's your dress attire, the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. What are the wiles of the devil? That could be affliction. That could be unemployment. That could be changing your mind from believing he's God to accepting there is no God or believing there are many other gods or believing there's something contrary to his word. What are the wiles of the devil? It can be unemployment. It can be a loss of a loved one where he uses the emotions and the pains of grief to tear us down that we have no hope. What are the wiles of the devil making you lose hope in a life and a world where he says, nay, in more all these things, 
may in all of these things. Are you more than conquerors through him that loved you? Romans 8 and 37. What are the wiles of the devil? Discord and tearing the body apart. What are the wiles of the devil? Destroying families and keeping them from loving one another. Keeping the church body, the body of Christ, not your church, but the kingdom of God at ends and at war with each other. These are the wiles of the devil. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So the Bible says here, 11, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, the Bible says, in high places. You ever wonder why some things happen that come from the top? Who's in control? Why would it be that they would want a body to perish? It all starts in your mind. The enemy has made a clear attack to know if he can set doubt in your mind, he can destroy everything else attached with what God spoke over your life. If God says you are saved, he can make you believe because of the things you've experienced and life that you live, you're not saved and that you're going to hell. In direct opposite of what God said. If the Lord says you're sealed, he will allow pain, destruction, negative reports, things to take you out because he doesn't want you to remember that God spoke divine healing over your life. Isaiah 53, 5 and 6, he was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement was upon his shoulder. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement of our peace on his shoulder, and by his strife we were healed. We were healed. Not going to be, but were healed. Therefore, He says to take on these things. God is up to something amazing. On to you, the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand in the evil day, withstand, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your guard, your loins girt about with truth, and having the breastplate. Of righteousness. Let's go back over that. He tells us to stand, to have our loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. What does that mean? To not allow the enemy to trap you in a lie. Be righteous. Do the right thing. When the enemy comes to give you everything wrong to do, to do the right thing, to follow his will and his word, to be about your father's business, to trust he makes no mistake. He is with you. He loves you. He cares. He's willing to walk with you as you're dressed according to his will. Dressing according to his will. 
Jesus, have mercy. Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for our awesome word. He's good. He's mighty. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Why does Satan want your feet? He knows as long as he keeps up having your mind, your spirit, your body, your environment will change without peace. How long do you think the Lord would allow him to steal your peace? But if we have our feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace, it will help us through. Know that the enemy is around. Know that he's near. But the Bible says if we resist him, he will flee. Hallelujah. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. When they're coming at you from the left, when they're coming at you from the right, when they're coming at you from every direction, when you have the breastplate of righteousness, and you have the shield of faith. You're able to quench them, to stop them. Oh, I see you over here, Satan. The Lord God rebuke you. Nope, you're not coming in this way because I have my shield of faith. I'm coming against the things through the word of God with what you're trying to do. And you will not be successful. Everything that you throw at me, I am using my faith that I will win. I am using my faith that I will conquer. I am using my faith that I am an overcomer. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Put your helmet on. You got to take the sword, the word of God. You cannot fight the enemy in your flesh. You cannot win in your flesh against the enemy. The Bible lets us know that when God created the world, it was spoken into existence. Therefore, we speak into the atmosphere when we're dealing with principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. We don't sit there and argue with them. We speak the word of God. We decree and we declare. We stand firm on his word that he gets all the glory. But here's the thing. We speak the language he speaks. We speak the language he speaks. How do you speak the language he speaks? Let's go to 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. That is not just your church. That is not just uh, your community. That is not just a place. That is for all saints. There are saints around the world. This is the kingdom of God, not one location, not one vicinity. It is the kingdom of God. And he says, and watching thereunto with perseverance and supplication for all things. When you see your brother or sister in a bind, spiritually, it is your obligation to pray for them. It's your duty. It says praying always. Always. How do you lift them up? Through prayer. How do you pray that the enemy will not devour them? Through prayer. 
How do you protect your local assembly as well as all assemblies walking in the kingdom of God through prayer? Through prayer. 19, and for me that utterance, utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. When you believe in something, you are passionate about it. You make sure everyone knows. You won't take down for certain things. You will not accept certain things. When you are dressed to win from head to toe through this gospel, according to Ephesians 6, you cannot lose if you follow that which is written there. You can't lose because you are following his divine will. The thing is, we have to be kingdom-minded, not religious-minded, not in a frame of mind that is my square here only. When I walk out the door, when I am in the presence of people, when I am in an atmosphere of believers, they are my brothers and sisters of Christ and in Christ. It is not my duty to try to figure them out and think they don't do this or they don't do that. Once they make it fully known or the Spirit of God reveals it to me, it is my duty to pray for them. It is my heart to yield to God that he may be glorified. Because we all need the Lord. We need him. He is the breath that we breathe. We need him. 21. But that ye also may know my affairs and how I do. Tychius, Tychius, a beloved brother, O minister in the Lord shall make known to you all things. Isn't it good to serve with someone that you can impart into, that you're not the only one running the show? God forbid there's something happened that you can't, and you've never imparted into anyone else, that they can gain the truth and the word of God, that they will be able to extend the grace of God. It's in his power through the word because they sat under what real love is. Can you imagine, I often say this with Jesus, how and where would we be today had there not been 12 disciples? Whether they fully followed, listened, and paid attention or not, what he gave, he gave to each and every one of them. What he sat down to do, he made the mission known. He made sure there was something that was going to be left in the earth realm, that someone could run on with it. So it is with our families. We say we're believers, but nobody knows we believe. Lo and woe unto us. There is something wrong with that kitchen. Then we say we believe in a God that can do anything but fail. But when we're in the masses of people, we barely want them to know his name. Woe unto us. And if we say we love him and we care about what he cares about, shouldn't we be dressed to win? Shouldn't we follow what this word is saying to overcome those things which are the wiles of the devil? Who are you in part of as a believer? Is it your children, co-workers, community, your church members? Who are you strengthening with the word of God that they may know in times of trouble how to stand and having done all to stand? Who 
are you getting yourself to? The things the, and listen, let me say this. Do not extend yourself to anyone to do what you feel. Follow this doctrine. This is why every week I say, get your Bible. Follow this gospel. Because other than that, you're creating your own religion. That's a dangerous thing. Well, I don't think they meant it. What did the word of God say? Dress to win. 22, whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that ye might know our affairs and that ye, he might, Jesus was concerned. He knew he was going away, but he set up an itinerary and an agenda for the business people to know what to do and how to do it. He gave specific instructions that they may fulfill them, that everyone would be dressed to win, that when you came in contact with someone who was in contact with the Lord, you would know they had been with you. Can we say people know you have been in contact with them? Can they say you have known him the way you say you've known him? Have you dressed to win the enemy? We know no weapon form will prosper. But every time it raises its ugly head, our God is there to defeat the enemy through the power he's given us in our mouths that we may speak boldly, the Bible tells us. Boldly against this enemy that comes to steal Heal. And boldly, the Bible says, that he may know our daddy. Lastly, after he's gone, taught how to dress, taught how to live, imparted, then he said, peace be to the brethren and love with faith from God. The Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace, the Bible says, be with them. Be, let me go back. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ. Here's the word. In sincerity. Amen. I have read Ephesians 6. A lot of times, I love when each time you read the word of God, you can get a nugget. You can learn something more. You can grow thereby. It ends to understand. He loves you. He's concerned about you. And he recognizes now in this world with the pandemic, with so many different things people are facing and going through, that we have to know how to dress to win. We have to know the principles. We have to know what to do, how to do it, and how to operate. How to be at peace. Because the enemy's agenda is going to keep going on, let me tell you. But he has an end date, which is why he's on the rampage. You better hear me. He's on the rampage because he knows his time is up, and he's no longer going to be able to do what he's been doing. I don't care if it's in a family. I don't care if it's in the community. I don't care if it's in a hospital. In our world, he's not going to be able to do it. His time is coming to an end, and this is why you have got to know what to do and how to dress who your God is by knowing you've been with the Lord. In your character, what you accept, what you don't accept, how you 
stand firmly and how you say, you know, I know God is with me. And who do you impart into that the kingdom can grow thereby? There's also this time now, which is very sensitive, called the hour of fasting and prayer. Why is this so necessary? Because we recognize there's a time to be shut in. There's a time to be shut in. There's a time to seek his faith for the entire year. There's a time to ask him, what is your will? What do I put on? How do I live? What are you requiring in 2022? Or do I just get up and go like I've always been? I know we're supposed to fast. And we become routine. I'm going to do it this day and that day. I'm going to do this. But yet, your spiritual life is still in a bomb. Still, you're doing the same as you did the year before because the flesh, the fasting and prayer is to break the flesh. It is to make it subject itself to the will and the word of God that you can live a life that's not only pleasing to him, but will heal and help you too, that will draw you closer to him than away from him, that will give you what you need, just like we need nutrients to be healthy and strong. We need this word that we can grow thereby. A Christian without prayer and the word is a defeated foe because when the enemy comes in, they have nothing to stand with. Thereby, he comes in, he rules, and he takes over. It makes it difficult to break the habits that one may have. But when you say, oh, I know I am walking in the grace of God. I am growing by his word. I am subjecting my flesh. No one has to tell us to fast at the beginning of the year. It should be a routine throughout the year. Why? Because it keeps you close to God. I fast throughout the year. I don't have to wait till January to do a 30-day or a 20-day. I want to know him intimately. Therefore, I want to spend quality time with him. I want to hear him speak to me, which means I have to push away everything that distracts me. And when it distracts you, that it takes time away from God. But when you stay in his presence, even on a job, you can say, Lord, I need more of you. I need you today. I want you to heal and help me. Guess what? People don't have to hear you say it out your mouth, but he's listening. You want to see your local assembly grow and be all God wanted to be? I dare you to get in line and subject yourself in these areas, dress in these areas, call forth things as though they are. Pray for your leadership. Ask God to cover them. And not just yours, but every leader, every pastor, everyone aside to get people to their destination. If you will do that, we'll be free. And just as the result They saw these. We will see the same thing in this life. I encourage you, just as we implore you, every week, get your body. Get the word in your hand. It is the most powerful thing you can have because you will be wiser. You will be stronger. You will have all that you need to make it. I don't want anybody being shocked. I don't want anybody being turned away. But many will appear and say, Lord, do you remember when I did this? Oh, you remember when I had this service for you? You remember the people that came? Do you remember the hands that I laid on people? Do you remember this? Do you remember that? And he will say... 
to talk to me. You worker of iniquity, I know you not. Why? Because there was no real relationship with him. The ethics, the all the things that the natural man wanted to do, but yet if the flesh wasn't subjected. And his will wasn't fulfilled. Then you are living against his will. He should be asked, what do you want me to do? Every week, Lord, what do you want me to say? It's somebody that needs that word. And if I was to, oh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this this week. I just feel like, oh, I felt the presence of God. I just feel I need to say, but it's not me speaking. It's his word that's going forth. Therefore, we align ourselves that his will be done. Very important. People's lives depend on truth. And listen, when you're conditioned and you're assigned to do it, you have to do it his way. I pray this week's word of exhortation has strengthened you and helped you to see clearer in this gospel that you'll be moved to serve with more passion and strength, that you will hear his voice to do his perfect will. Keep in mind you are a worker in our progress. You are a work. You are not fully there. I'm not. I'm learning every day I can. It's vital. It's essential. Especially now. when the world is going haywire, we can't just continue to just prophesy houses and cars and no order. He's concerned with the heart. He's concerned with the mind. He's concerned with the spirit of, and that is what he's looking for in these last days. So again, pray much for every pastor, every leader, every person in position that God is allowing to be used in these last days. The assignment does not slip through our fingers, that we don't go a different way, that the body of Christ stands strong in unity, that the kingdom can be built, and that he may be glorified. So again, thank you for listening to this week's exhortation. It is our prayer that you be strengthened. It is our prayer that you have heard something that has got your spiritual attention to help you to be all he calls you to be. Now, if this is your birthday month, I want you to get real excited to know that here at Just For You and Elation Radio, we celebrate you. Perhaps you've had a new baby and you know that life is exciting to DeMario and Harmony. We bless God for your new addition. May God bless you in the L.A. area. God bless you all that have had babies, started school, have gone on to do some amazing things because God blessed you to do it. But then there are times when your heart is broken, you're going through Things have not worked out the way you thought they would. We want you to know he, and just for you, we are praying for you. We will continue to lift up the body of Christ, to lift up those that in in prayer request, their needs, and the things that they desire in Christ. We are praying for you. We also want you to know that do not be troubled with this world. Trust in a God who never fails. Trust in the forever God, the majestic God. Our daddy, Abba Father, will see you through. If you don't know him in the pardon of your sins, 
and you want to grow within their body. But maybe you said to yourself, I'll just do it next year, or I'll just get myself together. I don't have to go to church. And all the things we tell ourselves, let us believe God for what he's getting ready to do, that we will know him and that we will be abiding with him. And pray for your family, your friends, and even your enemies that they will come to know the Lord if they don't. Remember, we don't want to see any loved ones, families. I say even an enemy, your kinsfolk, depart from you. You worker of iniquity, I knew you not. I also want to encourage you to continue to stay strong. If you haven't been reading your word, begin to read your word even the more. Seek him. Ask him what he wants you to read. Ask him, how do you pray? If you're unsure, trust him. He's going to come through. I have a few announcements for you as every podcast. If you are in need and in the St. Louis area and you're in need of resources, we have two organizations that I know definitely care about people. That is the United Way, you dial 211, or you can go online to look up the United Way for your area. They have resources that are in your community that you would be able to talk with them for them to refer you or give you direction on what your need is. We also have in the St. Louis area the Urban League St. Louis. Urban League St. Louis, that's U-L-S-T-L dot com. You can go online. They, too, have resources, programs that you can affiliate yourself with to become stronger and to become more stabilized in this time. There's so much going on that I don't care if people have been wealthy and had to go through serious transitions because of all the COVID work and certain life challenges that have thrown them off guard. Please keep in mind, help is available. Food pantries are available. Please contact these two organizations and they will give you updates and information as to what they have available. I also want to talk to you about a wonderful thing I found out recently. Uh, There is a program through the St. Louis County Library and the St. Louis Library that offer inspiration. Call your local library to ask them about what is necessary. At tax time, people are just going haywire. They're looking for a place, a person to assist them and preferably that they don't have to pay an arm and a leg. Ask the questions that you would like to know, Uh, not only if it's free, but you want to know what type of taxes they do. So you're not bringing all of your documents and then fine when you get there after waiting in line that you are not eligible. Call your local library to find out about their free tax preparation. There's also another unique program that they are pushing that I received a word about, and that is for females. Ladies, if you are out and you have an emergency, and we understand what I'm saying about an emergency, and maybe you can't get to the store, you're trying to get somewhere safe, quick, where you can help uh, yourself in this. There is a program with your local library. You must call them to find out how to receive a flow kit. It's called a flow kit. This will have sanitary napkins, tampons to assist you and aid you in that time. That's very important 
I don't know about you, but sometimes life happens and you want to be safe and secure and well. Please check with the libraries. They have some awesome resources that are able to assist you and help you through what you're going through. Now, listen, we have some exciting news coming, and I will tell you more about it maybe next week. But would you continue to pray for the Elation Radio and Magazine family? We are excited. We're growing. God is blessing. We thank God for our visionary and CEO. And we can't wait to share with you some exciting news that is happening in our Elation Radio and Magazine family. Stay tuned because you want to hear it first from those of us that podcast with Elation Radio and Magazine. Well, listen, we come to the close of another podcast. We pray that the Lord has blessed you, kept you, healed you, inspired you. I want to say also to those that are going through grief and hard times and feel like you're alone. You're never alone with the Lord. There is a body of believers lifting you up. I don't have to know your name or see you to pray for all that are grieved, to pray for those that are going through. We need to make it a point as the body of Christ to lift up all, especially the hurting and the broken, that God can be glorified. Ask him what is his will for you that you may be a blessing to those, especially as a believer in the household of faith and those that are in the world. He will lead you, guide you, and direct you that you may be the hands and the feet of Jesus, that those that never knew him would know who he is by your love and by you following his perfect will. Would you do that for us? Now, listen, if you'd like to get in contact with me, you may reach me, as some of you do, at Michelle Wright, that's M-I-C-H-E-L-E, Wright, W-R-I-G-H-T, on Facebook. You can inbox me, your prayer requests, your community announcements. I will be gratefully gracious to read them. Please send them there. If you're on Instagram, it's his blessed girl seven. That's his blessed girl seven. I am praying that those of you that may not be listening to the live, but you will catch it on the replay, that you follow yourselves accordingly, and that those things that have been mentioned in the announcements, that it will be a blessing for you and your family. And hey, if the resources and information are not for you, perhaps you know someone it is for, please pass it on. We don't want anybody suffering for something they can receive help for. We'd also like to encourage you to continue to pray for myself, um, Pastor Michelle Wright, my husband, Pastor Donald Wright. Uh, there's a lot that has happened over the last year. The Lord has, let me say it again, the Lord has been faithful to us. He has been gracious to us. He has been our healer and our deliverer, and he's still moving. I thank you for those of you that pray for us, that lift us before the Lord, but remember to lift up all pastors and all leaders. It's important. I want to thank you again for listening. We're going to pray out, and we want you to continue and if you have questions, biblical questions that you'd like for me to answer, please inbox me. I'll be more than happy to do that. If you'd like to pray, whatever, please inbox me on Facebook or Instagram. And I pray that the Lord will continue to bless you and keep you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this podcast. We thank you for our visionary and CEO, Dr. Kimmy Robinson and her family. We thank you, oh God, for our relation family. We 
thank you for every listener listening in live or by the replay. We ask you to bless them, to heal them, to touch them, to hear their prayers, oh God, to answer in the name of Jesus, to let your will be made known. May we all dress to win. May we all put forth the effort, not only in January, to become closer to you, but make it a living lifestyle that we live day to day, broken as the vessels we are, oh God. We ask that you men heal, strengthen, and deliver us all, that we recognize there is no good thing in this flesh, but we trust your word. We speak your word. We stand on your word. And we are trusting that your perfect will be done. Lord, lead us, guide us, direct us in everything we say and do that we know we can't go wrong if we're listening to you. And, Lord, help us. Help us, Lord, wherever help is needed. Touch that one who is grieving, oh, Lord. Touch the mind of those that have not made a decision to follow you. Touch today, oh God, every spoken and unspoken request. And, Lord, we ask that you will give us even greater faith. God, we recognize faith, but give us greater faith to be able to believe more, see more, do more according to your word that you may be glorified. It is about you being glorified. So have your divine will and way. Forgive each and every one of us of our sins and give us the heart to forgive others. Help us to live this word, stand on it, and trust you even the more. And as we are waiting on you, help us to be fulfilling our time with the things that you're calling us through and to. And we will give you all the honor, all the praise, and all of the glory. We love you so much, Lord. And we ask that you will continue allowing your light to shine through the lives of your children, allowing us to let our light so shine that others may see our good work and glorify you in heaven. Have your divine will and way, we pray. And for every unspoken request to answer those two, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, thank you again for listening. This has been Pastor Michelle Wise Wright with the Just For You podcast on Elation Radio. And we're looking forward that you join us next week. Lord says the same. Wednesday, 5.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. God bless you until next time. Hallelujah. This is Pastor Michelle Y. Wright. We love you and have a blessed and beautiful evening. Amazing grace.
for how you brought me, how you brought me through the night. Lord, you kept me, and you never left me. You stood by my side. There were so many times when I came so close. Oh, man, death, he tried to take me in. So the reason I'm here is not hard for me to see. In fact, it's so easy for me to explain. It was God's way. When I strayed away, even though I knew the word, still I would know me. The God's mercy and his grace stay with me and brought me, brought me. Jesus. 